everyone. I'm Maya Matthews reporting for ETV. We're here today at Enfield's Wastewater Treatment Plant. The reason we're here is to try to explain a little of how the plant works, age, and use issues here at the facility, and how that all ties into the new sewer use fee and the planned referendum for repairing the plant in November. Enfield residents and businesses utilize the town's sewer system every day. The system's miles and miles of underground pipes all connect to the Enfield Wastewater Treatment Facility, where sewage enters and treated wastewater exits into the Connecticut River. Over the last several decades, wear and tear on the system has demanded that the town act now to improve the wastewater infrastructure in order to remain compliant with state and federal regulations. The recommended improvements are comprehensive, but with a majority of the repair and upgrade costs being reimbursed to the town from the state. Enfield is able to rehabilitate the entire system. Going forward, the new sewer use fee sets the town up to adequately fund future operating and capital costs. We are with Kevin Schlatz, manager of the wastewater treatment facility here in Enfield. So Kevin, I understand that once the wastewater leaves our house, there are three stages to the collection process. Could you please explain those to us briefly? When residents or businesses, they either flush their toilet, take a shower, or they turn on a sink and it goes down the drain. From the drain, it goes to the underground pipe collection system, which we call the collection system. From, from those pipes, it goes into one of our 16 pumping stations, which is basically pumps that pumps it up to a higher elevation. From those pumps, it goes back into another part of the collection system and ends up down at the wastewater treatment plant on 90 Parsons Road. So how old is the collection system leading up to the plant? Depending on what part of town you're in, in the Thompsonville section, those pipes date from the early 1900s to the 1940s. Um, but a majority of town that has the collection system is um, from the mid-60s to um, mid-1980s. mid So now the wastewater reaches the plant. What happens to it once it gets here? When the wastewater comes to the treatment plant, we start what we call a preliminary treatment, or primary, uh, preliminary treatment. The preliminary treatment removes anything other than wastewater, um, tampons, condoms, rags, uh, dispo what they call disposable wipes. Those are removed from the system. From the next step is what we call the aerated grit chamber. Basically, it's a jacuzzi tub for the water, and there's where all we remove what we call inorganic matter, eggshells, um, sand, dirt will settle out. From there, we do a, um, what we call a primary treatment. That's the first stage of our treatment. The second stage is what we call the aeration tanks. There we remove nitrogen gas and other harmful bacteria. And the third process, what we call secondary treatment, and that's where all our solids settle out, and the final product, the final effluent, goes out into the Connecticut River. In between those processes, we remove what we call our biosolids or our bugs. They will end up getting removed out, and they get squished, so all the water comes out, and they go off-site for disposal. So now that we know how it works, can we talk a little bit about the history of the facility? the age of any upgrades and what it takes to keep it running properly. The original plant was built during the 1930s during the Work Progress Administration. That time it was just primary treatment um, and it went out to the Connecticut River. In the late 60s the Clean Water Act came through through Congress. The plant was upgraded to secondary treatment to give us a better product to go out into the river. That project was completed in 1972. During the 1990s, the plant was then updated to remove nitrogen, um, the mineral nitrogen, from the wastewater treatment plant. And that was, last, like I said, the last done in the mid-90s. That was the last major upgrade to the treatment plant. In the 90s, um, Long Island Sound was under, was having issues with plant growth and other issues with oxygen demand for the fishes. Yeah. So in the 90s, the DE, uh, Department of Energy and Environmental Protection came along and required all wastewater treatment plants to remove nitrogen, which they considered the limiting factor of the growth of the plants in Long Island Sound. Since then, Long Island Sound has come around and we do remove approximately two to 300, 200 to 300 pounds a day of nitrogen. Can you explain to us what it takes to keep this facility running properly? Resources and people. People are our biggest resources. We currently have 13 staff members who help, help our collection system, help our treatment plant, and also our pump stations. Um, funding is another issue that we have. We do have a lot of older equipment that we have to maintain that's original from 1972. Those are our two major things, our people and funding. 
Right now, currently with the aging infrastructure we have, everything being mostly original from the 72 plant, a lot of it is more costly to maintain and upkeep. It's harder to find parts. A lot of the parts we do have or do try to get have to be custom fabricated. A lot of the equipment should be upgraded. It would be more cost effective for the town to be upgrading this equipment and trying to repair a, um, a 40 year old piece of equipment. It's very hard to get these parts. Um, with upgrading the equipment, parts will be more readily accessible. It will be, it will be a, using less resources to keep that equipment up and running so we can focus our attention outside the gate. Where does this money come from now to help maintain the facility and who will be helping to fund it in the future? The residents do pay, to pay a sewer user fee. Those fees have associated costs included with them, which is possibly a planned upgrade. But also if the plant was to go through an upgrade, there are also federal and state funds that the town can go after and they would be reimbursed. Thank you for your time, Kevin. It's been a pleasure discussing the wastewater treatment plant issues with you today. Thank you very much. That the plant is vital to the town, its residents and businesses, goes without saying. Upgrades to the plant are necessary. The sewer use fee pays for those improvements going forward. The town is currently working to put together a plan to upgrade the facility and lines to give to the residents to vote on this November. If you would like additional information about the improvements, the sewer use fee, or the referendum, please contact your town councilor or the town manager's office. I'm Maya Matthews reporting for ETV. Thanks for watching and see you next time.